Hey guys, it's Nathan Rose here. In today's video, I'm going to take you through a game I played on chess.com where I blundered very early in the game. I found myself a piece down with zero compensation. And what I want to teach is that the approach that I think you should take to this game and the approach that I took while playing this game, like when something like this happens where you, where you just make a completely stupid mistake very early in the game, it's, it's very tempting to just quit straight away. Resign the game, start a new one, try better next time. But what I always like to do in situations like this is to try and have some fun, to try and play moves and play in a style that I wouldn't be able to play in ordinarily. I mean, I've already lost objectively after you've blundered a piece so early in the game. So what is there to lose? Um, you can have some attacking chess, you can cause your opponent some discomfort and hey, maybe you'll even turn the game around. So let's get into the game. Um, White plays e4 and I've been trying out the Sicilian defense over the last couple of weeks. It's still pretty new for me and I get hit with a move that I hadn't seen before. d4. Now this is called the smith Mora Gambit. Essentially White is sacrificing a pawn very early in order to gain activity. Now when you get hit by one of these gambits and you don't know the opening theory so well, it's always an uncomfortable experience because if White's going to give you a pawn just like that, you better believe that he has studied the lines better than you have if it's a new opening for you. I haven't memorized what to do here at all. So here's what I do. I take the pawn. I figure, let's see what happens if you accept the gambit. White plays knight to f3 and I play my first inaccuracy, knight f6. I'm attacking white's pawn, it's true, but white's follow-up is very natural and I should have seen it coming. e5, gaining more space, making the knight move. Now, where to move the knight? Um, it's not really comfortable on a lot of squares. Maybe there is good. I mean, I don't want to move it all the way back to where it started from. I move it to where I think is the most active square, which is um, e4. But then of course white just takes my pawn and forces the knight to move again. But I think I'm clever. I think I've seen a way to refute white's last move. I throw in this check with queen a5. My idea is that white can't very well block here because then I can just trade my knight. The same happens if the knight goes there. If he puts a pawn on this square then okay I've taken away a good square for his knight. But what I didn't see, what I what I should have seen, when you're trying to think of your opponent's best replies, but it just hit me like a bolt from the blue. White played g4, and now I'm losing. The point is the queen has to move, and the knight's still under attack, um, and there's no way for me to move the queen to a spot which defends the knight, so I'm down a knight already. Damn. <laughs> so okay, um, I... I just have to move the queen, obviously. I can't lose the queen, so I retreat the queen. White takes the knight, of course, and here's where the fun begins. So I'm down a piece. What to do? Well, I've got to try and get as active as possible as soon as possible. White's queen is in the middle, so it might be a target. Uh, White also hasn't castled yet. His king is still right there. so. What I've got to try and find are moves which are going to develop with tempo as much as possible. I play here which um, attacks this pawn, although it's already defended by the queen, but still I need to get my pieces out. White defends, overprotects it. I play this move. Now white of course can take, which is what he does, but now my bishop is active. So I've got a couple of pieces active and coordinated already. So. Um, white moves his bishop out here, giving a check. I don't really want to trade pieces, but I figure that by doing it this way, I at least trade pieces in a way that helps me develop another piece. So now my I've got three pieces off the starting squares. White castles, very understandable. He's up a piece, so he just wants to get his king safe and consolidate his advantage. 
And I move the knight here to attack white's queen. Now, that's a better square for my knight. The queen has to move, of course, which it does. And I bring another piece lining up against white's queen. Now, there's not... The, th the threat here is a pretty obvious one. Um, the threat is for the bishop to take on h2 and then reveal the rook's attack on the queen. This is the sort of thing my opponent's going to see through, most probably. I don't expect him to fall for this, but it does get my rook to a better square. It makes white respond to it, and it's an annoying move. It's a move which, which white has to think about. He has to expend a little bit of mental energy on. And even though it doesn't seem like much, a basic threat like this one, these small threats and small niggling moves can add up to the overall cognitive load which your opponent's feeling. White gets out of the dangerous position of his queen by throwing in this check. Now, I of course don't want to trade queens because that would make white's job easier for him. So what I do is I, I move the king. I move the king to e7. Why not? I've connected my rooks with this move. And I've got my king out of harm's way, at least for the time being. I mean, it's not ideally placed there, of course. But hey, I've, I've blundered a piece. I can't make ideal moves. I've just got to do the best that I can. White tries to grab some space. I hit the queen again, which is again a little annoying for white. He has to move it away moves it to this square here with the threat of taking this pawn. I actually wouldn't mind that. If he took that pawn on his next move, then that would open up the G file for my rook up against white's king. This is basically my plan. I've just got to throw all my pieces at white's king and try and cause some complications. I take a pawn first, grab back a little bit of material, and now white plays this move, which is a good move. Now he's, he's increasing the pressure on this knight. The knight's pinned, it can't move. And it's something I have to respond to. What I do is I move this rook here. I, I create this line up against white's king straight away. White's developing and I make this move here, which is again, just an annoying move. It's attacking the bishop, there's nothing more to it than that, and perhaps it gives my queen some angles to move back over here at some point. Um, but eventually I'm able to harass white's queen, and white makes what I would consider to be a mistake. He takes this knight, and this is exactly what I was hoping for. This is the move that I wanted to see. I was trying to work out how I was going to convince him to take this knight so that I could play my next move and get this open g-file against the white king. White's still winning, no question. He's still got the extra piece, and one rook by itself is not going to add up to anything too scary, but at least it's the start of some threats. Plus, the queen has to move. Uh, White's queen has got to go somewhere. It's being attacked right now, so it has to move out of danger. And I'm moving my pawns towards White's king. Now, this is starting to sow the seeds of doubt, of fear, of panic, perhaps. Um, White's still up a piece. He, he thinks he's winning, and he is winning, according to the computer. But seeing the pawns come towards your king, seeing this rook lined up against your king, having your queen being harassed, it all, it's all adding up to a feeling, I would guess, if, if I was on the other side of annoyance, frustration, impatience. Now, White moves a knight towards the uh, attack, and... Why not? It also attacks my attacks my queen, so a dual purpose move, a good move I think from my opponent. And I create a threat of checkmate. Again, I'm, I'm sure my opponent's going to see through this. He's not going to let me checkmate him on g2 just like that. But he has to respond to it, so he again has to think. And he offers the queen trade. It's quite interesting here because at this point the computer says that I played a mistake. It, it says that this move moving out of the way of the queen trade is an error. But I don't agree. I, I think that the, this is a very good practical move. The, the move that the computer recommends is this sacrifice here. Um, the king takes and then the rook takes the knight, which I did have in my mind, but 
what it allows is after this night is taken for white to trade queens and white has got um, an extra knight still so I'm I'm closer to an end game where there's less material on the board so I didn't want to go for this 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 makes you know perhaps objectively this is the best move according to the computer but I'm not playing a computer I'm playing a human and the human would much rather see the queens traded off the board if you're a hidden material so anyway queen g5 brings in the knight to attack now I do play that move now I do play this move because the possibility of the queen trade is not on the table um, so this move works a lot more strongly now attacking the knight and the point is that if the queen were to take this rook well that would be checkmate in one so the rook is immune from capture I mean I did sacrifice this bishop at the start of the line so I've lost another piece and and so is white by losing the knight but what it's done is it's it's bringing my forces closer to that king and it's also broken some of the defense around that king so again white would be getting more and more nervous i think with moves like this i, I guess that he probably didn't see that move coming um, I'm, I'm not sure but it's it's a tactic which is reasonably hard to see if you're on the receiving end of it so i, I guess that he wasn't prepared for this so um, white gets out of danger and grabs another pawn and I've got to move my king out of the way. Now his mindset has probably shifted from attack into defense. Like he sees these threats coming in. I mean he has to, he has to stop the threat of checkmate and the queen is guarding that square at the moment but if he wants to be able to move that queen off that diagonal he's got to protect it with another piece so that explains that knight move. And this rook is going to come in so that's what I do the king goes back under the shelter of his own pawns and now I play here with a pretty obvious threat again of just going here with checkmate I expected white's next move I knew that this move would come he plays this move which looks like it's forking the rook and queen and more importantly it stops the checkmate threat on that square but it's time to throw the kitchen sink at white and destroy the defenses of his king once and for all rook takes g3 now this rook sacrifice isn't actually a sacrifice at all i gain two pawns and i take the knight afterwards so i've gained two pawns and a knight in exchange for the for the rook and it's check note so that uh, that rook there cannot be taken if we just go back a couple of moves note that after rook takes g3 queen takes g3 is not as strong because white has a good way to defend against this check the knight coming in here blocks everything black doesn't have any more good checks so i didn't go for that instead i grab the knight and white is now firmly on the defensive he blocks with his rook it's always dangerous to block a diagonal threat with a, a piece like a rook which uh, cannot move diagonally so the computer still says that white is winning i mean after all he has got an extra rook i've, I've got a couple of extra pawns but in an end game like this the rook is going to mop up all the pawns if we swap all the material off so i have to keep being aggressive another check uh, with the queen this time and understandably white brings his own queen back he, he'd love to trade queens um, that would be his dream scenario if the queens come off it's two rooks against one rook and that's very easy for him so i play another challenging move and this is the moment where white finally cracks i've got a couple of threats here i've got a couple of threats which he's got to respond to now this is this is harder to refute so we've we've gone from moves like checkmate and one which are which are easy for white to see and to respond to but he still has had to respond to them but now this threat with this move is a bit more tricky so i'm attacking this rook that's the obvious threat but the the other threat which he has to respond to in the same move is the threat of the rook coming to g4 which would um, pin white's queen to the king so i'd be able to win the queen in exchange for my for my rook and 
in an end game with a queen versus two rooks, it's it's going to be difficult for for white to win this, um, and and black may even win this when the board is like this with most of the pawns off the board. It really comes down to whether the rooks can coordinate, but it's difficult for both sides. So he doesn't want to allow that. So the move that he plays, I think, is completely understandable, but it's a losing blunder. He plays queen f1. Now it seems to block the threat on the rook. The queen can't take the rook anymore. That's obvious. And also this rook check here. Well, the rook can give a check, but the queen is no longer pinned to the king. So I can understand why he played it. Um, but it actually loses because now that is a check rather than a pin. So White has to respond to it. He he doesn't really want to move his king over here because there's all all kinds of possibilities of the rook checking here or maybe the queen checking here. It's a lot to calculate and both of us are down to very little time left on our clock. Of course he doesn't want to block with the queen. So he plays the what I would say is the most natural way to block that check with the rook. Now with the rook blocking this check Again, he's offering a trade. So if we trade rooks, then it'll be a queen and rook versus a queen. Again, very easy for white. So I give another check. And actually here I spot the tactic. It's, it's at this point where I've found a way to win material. White blocks with the queen, but notice that that queen is pinned to white's king. And I can take advantage of that with this move. Now I can take the rook. The point is that, well, the queen can't take the rook because it's pinned, and after white takes it, I've got this nice fork here. Just simply forking the forking the uh, king and the rook. White blocks the fork, hoping that I'll trade queens, but of course I'm not going to do that. I win the rook, and now I'm actually a head material. So this is where we've got to. I'm, what is it? One, two three pawns ahead and I can look forward to the rest of the game with some optimism. Now there is still a lot of work to do. I haven't won yet, not by any means. These queen end games where there's lots of loose pawns all over the board are notoriously difficult. There's going to be a lot of checks, there's going to be a lot of threats um, and, and both of us as you can see are down to very little time. So he's got one minute and 16 seconds plus a 10 second increment on his clock and I've got 40 seconds plus the same increment. But in this position, White may be annoyed at himself for having blunders and thrown away a winning position where he was up a piece for almost the entire game. Makes things very easy for me. He grabs this pawn, but now we can trade queens, but it's going to be forced and it's going to be on my terms. Queen g6. That forks the king and the queen, and the only thing that white can do is to take that queen after which it's pretty trivial I've got two extra pawns and white resigns. So was I lucky in this game? Maybe but but I think the luck came because of the way that I played after losing the piece of course I shouldn't have done that. If you do find yourself in a situation like this and you will you will make mistakes in the opening and find yourself worse the thing to do is to play with energy, play with dynamism, create threats, and force your opponent to keep responding to them. And at some point, if you make enough of the threats, you never know. They'll, they might make a mistake, and you might be able to win the game, like I did here. Hope you found that helpful. Hope that you can have some great comeback wins of your own. Let me know in the comments if you do. And... Please subscribe for more videos on chess. Bye for now.